So what is a linear time invariant system? Well, here's a system where you put a signal in and a signal comes out. And for example, this might be speaking into a microphone and the signal coming out of the microphone. And if it's linear, then if you put in a signal which is A times bigger, then you'll get a signal out which is A times bigger. Also, if you put in two signals added together, then the outcome coming out will be the addition of the two individual outputs added together. And the time invariant is that if you shift in time the input, then the output gets shifted in time by the same amount. So these, these two are for linear, and this one is for time invariant. Now, can we get a generic equation relating the input to the output? And the answer is yes. In this case, for linear time invariant systems, we can characterize the system by something called the impulse response, HT. And let's expand on that a little bit. Let's say, for example, if I put an impulse into my system, which means a short impulse, maybe hitting something with a hammer very quickly or uh, some other very sharp input, think of it like that, uh, then what would the output be? And let's say, for example, it was something like this, something that, uh, that where the system, the, the response of the system from an impulse was to rise in value and then decrease. And this would be the output. So what does that mean? Well, let's say, uh, let's draw exactly what that is. So if this was the input x of t, uh, if that was a an impulse at time zero, so we draw that with a delta function at time zero, then the output would be the impulse response. So the output yt would be exactly this. For that impulse, this would be the output. Okay, so that's the definition of the impulse response. What would happen if we delayed the impulse? So if our xt was a delayed impulse, uh, so a delta function at an offset in time, then according to the time invariance, the output would be a delayed version of the impulse response. So this would be yt if this was xt. And of course, uh, if it was negative as well, if it was scaled, uh, so if the input uh, xt was a negative time-shifted version, maybe scaled as well, uh, then the output would be a negative uh, and scaled version of the impulse response. I think, so I think you get the idea here about how useful the impulse response is in characterizing the relationship between input and output. And in fact, we can write an equation that characterizes this relationship in terms of this, and it's called convolution. And we've got more videos, lots more videos on the channel uh, explaining convolution, and you can see them in the links below. But essentially, uh, we write it with this star, uh, and the output for linear time invariant systems is the input convolved with HT. Now, also, uh, we've got this, in, and what is that? Well, that's an in, integral from negative infinity to infinity of h of t minus tor, x of tor, d tor. So let's look at a couple of examples of this. Uh, what is linear time invariant system? Some examples. Well, let's think of this amplifier example I talked about before, where this is a spe speech signal, and this is the output from the microphone. Uh, let's say we had an instantaneous with no delay, uh, and then we might think of this relationship, or we have this relationship between xt and yt, uh, where it's a linear relationship with some gain. So in this case, yt equals beta times xt. And this is linear time invariant. It satisfies these properties above. Uh, what about a rectifier? Uh, uh, a rectifier takes a signal and makes all the negative parts positive. And one way of doing this is to square the input signal. So if we take the input signal and take the square of it, this is a rectifier. And this is not linear time invariant. It clearly does not satisfy the linear as uh, aspect here. 
a linear relationship. Uh, another common one is a nonlinear amplifier. Uh, so, nonlinear amplifier, in this case, the input and output relationships have a threshold. So, this is xt, this would be yt, and, and commonly amplifiers do have this in practice where they have a maximum amount of gain and then beyond that they don't have any more gain. So if xt is in this region here then it's a linear relationship just like we had over here for these, the amplifier I've talked about here. But in practice when the input voltage gets too high the output does not continue to increase and it thresholds. And of course in this case we don't have this exact relationship. And so this also is not linear time invariant. Uh, so hopefully these examples and this uh, in intuition here about the impulse response uh, give you some more insights into linear time invariant systems. If you found this useful, uh, give it the thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the link below for the web page which has a full categorized list of videos and subscribe to the channel for more videos.